So yeah, just let me, you know, tell me who you are, what you do and how you started with Hamilton Families. Oh, wow. Um, okay, so I'm Tanya Allen and I am the operations manager for our family shelter. And how I got to Hamilton Family is a little bit interesting. I don't remember applying for the position. I remember getting a call from, um, at that time, the interim director, which is, or was Donna uh, Williams and invited me for an interview and I came and sat down. I moved to San Francisco, never visiting before because I wanted to specifically work in the arena of homelessness and sheltering and, mm. and um, trauma, um, not victims, but those that have, have experienced trauma and have um, become displaced. Mm. And that's specifically why I came to San Francisco. So I moved here from the East Coast. So kind of giving you a backdrop here. So I moved here and I had the interview and I met with Donna and I was like, you know what? I can work with you. Meaning um, I can work with her because she was at that time the interim director here at the shelter. And we just kind of met and jailed. And I told her, she said, well, how long would you commit for us? So, you know, I can commit for a year. Well, I've been here almost three years now. Oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? So I, um, I drank the Kool-Aid. Um, I went to an, an, the annual banquet at that time, and this was before COVID, and I was listening to, at that time, the CEO, which was Tamika Moss, and she was speaking on the, the relevance and the work and just her passion and her dedication and commitment to those that are... Um, disproportionate and um, undocumented and unhoused uh, black, brown, as well as Caucasian individuals. And I was like, I drink, I drunk the Kool-Aid, I'm here. So that's kind of my roundabout long short story of how I got to Hamilton Families. Wonderful, wonderful. I, I, I love hearing that like, you came, you came thinking All right, I have a year and that whatever it is you've experienced clearly supported you staying for much longer, which I think speaks to the environment that you work in. And I wanted to know, like, as a Black woman with work experience that predates your time at Hamilton Families with all this mm -hmm. that can bring with it, what has it been like being a Black woman in this organization and working with allies? But also from what I've been able to see, there's a large collection of black people in leadership positions and and that's not something i perceive as too uh happens too often in workforces so can you tell me what it's like in hamilton families um i i can be honest and tell you that um coming into the nonprofit arena um, my previous background I, I did consulting work with nonprofits, but never have i worked for a nonprofit 100 percent mm -hmm. and having the opportunity to become part of the Hamilton family um, was and is one of those things that I, I thank in my life, um, my God for putting me here. Um, I have seen some growth in reference to people of color. I still think that we need to do more. Um, I, I really do. Um, I think that it needs to be some more balanced work um, between, <clears throat> excuse me, between the, um, I guess the rationale and the, the embracing, that's what I would like to say, the embracement of those of color, mm -hmm. because prim primarily the people that we do serve are those of color. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I feel that sometimes we are disattached from that struggle, that, um, societal norms that does not fit those of color. Mm -hmm. um, that's not, it wasn't designed for us. Um, and to understand that, yes, we all have the same guidelines and principles, but the mindset from where people of color are coming from is different because of the struggles, their environment, their experiences, their educational background. It hinders what you would think is normal. Prime example, I had, a, I had a mother tell me, you know, I'm almost 30, but I've never paid rent. I've never paid a bill. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there like, okay, we, we have to take you where you are. You're and your children are in the shelter, but we need to take it further back than that. We need to teach you how to 
pay a bill. First of all, we need to get you to understand that just because you made a dollar don't mean that you need to spend that whole dollar. So it, it's it's a little bit different versus those that um, come into the the unhoused arena, but they had something before. Yeah, they easily can uh, grasp to the fact that, okay, I got to do this, this, and this. I need to go this place and to go that place. And I have to be there at this time versus those that, you know, I, I, no one showed me, no one taught me how to pay a bill. No one taught me how to go and apply for a job because I was always, you know, taken care of. I, my family was homeless and now I'm an adult and I'm just doing that perpetual cycle. So um, working inside of Hamilton family, I know I just got off topic there, but uh, working inside of Hamilton families is, is what I mean by when I said that we need to embrace the difference mm. and not try to um, sugarcoat the difference. There is a difference. We need staff that understand that just because I'm a minority or person of color doesn't mean I understand the struggle. Right, right. Because not everyone of color have had to struggle. Me being a single mother, I know what it's like to make a decision. Okay, hmm, my child is going on a field trip. I don't have any extra money, but she has to go on this field trip because all her friends are going. So what am I going to give up in order for her to get that? So I understand when families come and say, well, I, I don't have money to save this month because I have to do this, that, and the third. So that's what I'm talking about when I say understanding and, and grasping the concept of, of those of color and difference, because it is a difference. Oh. Um, and, though, and though we have those in leadership positions, meaning people of color in leadership positions, they have to think, they need to think back, okay, to what it's like. Um, and not just think, well, you know, she just didn't go because she doesn't, she doesn't want to get housed or he doesn't want to go because he doesn't want to get housed or, you know, they've just been lazy. We need to find the root of the issue, mm. uh, root of the, the problem, root of the, the lack of knowledge, and then educate them on what that is so that they can be able to not only use it in this arena, but use it in the next one and the next one and then give it transitional from generational generation. That's where the down, that's where the downside is because sometimes I've been here, I'm like, wait, what do you mean? Your mother was here and now you're here. It's just the whole generation of, of homelessness being perpetuated and that we're not breaking that cycle. So I think I got all off topic and I hope somewhere in there answer what you really wanted to know. Yes, you definitely. And if not, Tell me again, and I'll try to hit it on this go round. No worries. You definitely actually you touched on it, and you also touched on something that in one of the other conversations I had with one of your colleagues also came up, and it's that the work isn't done. We transition to the next thing, and it's that you know, okay, yeah, we're doing incredible work to end family homelessness, but we ourselves within in house have to keep moving forward as well. Um, someone mentioned earlier that like what they would tell to anyone on the street who wanted to maybe support Hamilton families, like do the work, learn the thing so that you can pass that along. Because again, yes. I don't know beyond what I know until I know it, you know? And so right. exactly, exactly. And so it takes people being like, all right, we did check, we checked off one box, but there's still more to know. And, and I think part of what it seems like Hamilton families has as an ace in the hole are people who are like, all right, we, yes, we did accomplish this thing, but we're, we're not done. Um, right. We still have to reshape our minds around the fact that not all skin folk are kin folk. We don't have all the same problems. Right. So uh, I think it's important that we have people who can, yeah, allow us to marvel in our successes, but also remind us that like there are more successes to achieve. And as such, I want to, and, and to me, I also think that to me, that's just very, uh, if there are collective truths about our community, I think our community has been that varied in that we have people who are always going to be ready to make sure we're living up to the stuff we're talking about and check us. And so I want to ask you, and, and that to me is legacy. That's part of the black legacy is that like, there's always someone's auntie or uncle or cousin or friend who will be like, wait a minute. We st there's still more work to do. And so yes. what do you hope the legacy of Hamilton families will be to that, to that end of always moving forward, always achieving? Think 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, what do you hope that legacy will be? That, that is a very good question. Um, and my strategic brain is, is thinking, um, 
I think the legacy, if I could, if I could sum it up in a couple of words, would be um, not just looking at housing, but looking at, um, I guess I would say, thank you, not just housing them in a place or a structure, but looking at housing them as a whole unit, meaning the, in that I'm saying that the family is sound, the family structure is um, intact. Um, that being, if it's a single mother and a child, that relationship is sustainable because when they when they've reached the traumatic component of being homeless, it really does do something to that to that structure, to that fabric of that of that family unit. Mm. So, and not trying to just play on words, but that we house them wholly. Yeah. And then teach them what they need to do to keep it, not just monetarily, but also emotionally, socially, mm. and and spiritually, whatever that may be for them and their families. Because when those things become unbalanced, something suffers. Yeah. So if their if their economic situation becomes unbalanced, then their physical and their mental state changes and it becomes unfluctuated. It becomes unstable because they don't have the income. Mm. So now that now you're looking at stress, now you're looking at worry, now you're looking at, you know, lack of being totally present. So if you have children, now you're looking, okay, well, I can't be my best authentic self to my child because I'm worried about this and I'm worried about housing. I'm worried about, you know, income or work. I'm worried about how to feed you. So if we take that whole component and when we look at housing them, Mm-hmm. Our legacy is that we're we're putting them in a structure building, but we're also putting them in a in a safe space as far as that family unit to where it doesn't matter where they go, where they are, and and what they're doing, that family could sustain itself. Oh, so yeah. the legacy for me is being whole. Mm. And it takes more than just putting them in a space. Absolutely. I think because I can be in that space today. But if I don't have those other pieces, I'm going to lose it. And then here I am eight, nine, 10, 12 months later, and I'm back in the same boat again. Yeah. And I think that's, it sounds like that's kind of a linchpin idea in, in the longevity of, of sustainability when it comes to living well is that, I mean, I just think about gener- the generational traumas or generational mm-hmm. challenges that my my life has had ju- that predate my time on this earth like this is my family line three generations ago and the work it's taken me to attempt to break the cycle right was a uh, one heck of a hill to climb and so when i think of people who come from generations of humans who've experienced homelessness i'm like that is a hill and a half to climb for real and so if Hamilton families can, and not just Hamilton families, but most importantly, the people who who support the participants in Hamilton families can do the work to make sure that they are making people, like you said, whole and not just putting them in a shelter. And I, and I think, honestly, I've perceived, based on the information I've been able to learn over the past few days um, through Hamilton families, is that that's one of the goals that you all are working towards. Uh, again, yes. uh, how, housing first, community strong, I think is the, uh, the, yes. the slogan. And that's such an important whole thought is that like, yes, it may start with the structure of the house, but the intention after that is to go like, make yes. a human whole again, a support them in being their whole self again, so that if they wind up leaving the Bay Area for, for a good thing. Say, say they decide to leave the Bay Area, you would hope that these lessons are so structured in their brain. Exactly. And that's so important. I, I love that. Thank you for, for sharing that. And I wanted to ask as well, in what capacities do you get to work with the participants? And mm-hmm. how have they affected your view of the world? Or how have they affirmed what you may have believed before? So my work with the families, um, I, my position, let's, let's start there. My position is operation. So everything that I do has to deal with the environment, the, the structural, the ins and outs of a family in our shelter. Mm-hmm. Um, that meaning that the building is sound, that means that the building is clean. That means that the, they have meals, they have snacks, they have what they need um, as, a, as a family while they're in a shelter. Um, as well as for staff and the safetyness 
Um, so my work with them, it touches everything. Mm. Um, I, I don't, however, get to do a lot of the, the one-on-one conversations in reference to um, housing search or um, their mental status or even their educational components for their children. However, when, but it comes full circle because if they're needing, like for example, if they need a desk or a stand or if they need um, a transportation to get to and from to pick up something for school, then that comes to me and I'm like, okay, how can we make this happen? Or if they need something, if they need linens or if they need, you know, um, if they're getting ready to exit the shelter and they don't have furniture or they don't have housing goods, housing supplies or, or household items, then it comes to my department and we kind of, okay, what do we need to do to make this happen so that families can have a, a actual bed in their new apartment or you know, if they don't have enough food, we can give them packets and kind of get them, you know, started. Um, and then also making sure that while they're here at the shelter, my goal and my job is to make sure it doesn't feel like a shelter. Right. This is, I want them to feel like when they walk through the doors, they're coming home. Mm. And even though this is a home that I don't want them to stay, but it's a home that I want them to have while they're here. Right. Because with, as, a, as a mother, I want my child to feel comfortable wherever she goes. Mm -hmm. And if this is where we're going to be living for three to six months or what have you, I want her to feel safe. So that's the same kind of model that I have working with my team is that, okay, this is home. It may be a shelter, but it doesn't have to feel like a shelter. Um, The beds, I want the beds to be comfortable because who knows if this was me, I would want it to be comfortable for me. So I look at it in that sense. Um, I look at it in the sense that my door is open to where if a family comes to me and say, you know, I, we don't like what's being fed in the kitchen because of our ethnicity. Can we have some? And it's like, okay, talk to me a little bit more about what you're talking about. Let me see what we can or what we can't do. There mm-hmm. may be some things I can do, but there's some things that I can't do because of the masses of the individuals that we serve. Mm-hmm. However, but let's talk about it. So I, I meet with them and work with them on that. Um, I meet with the families when there's any type of, um, <laughs> when we have discrepancies in reference to uh, how things are supposed to operate when they use the bathroom or when they use the community rooms or, you know, when they're in the dining hall, you know, hey, we're not, we're home, but we're not quite home, you know, yep. you know, kind of keeping them in that mindset that this is a community mm. and, and give them that voice to where they can speak in reference to, okay, what can I contribute to the community and how can I take accountability and ownership of our community? Um, And then you said, how, what was the last one you asked me? How does it kind of, how has that affected you? Affected me. Thank you. Oh, wow. It, so let me tell you this. When I first came to San Francisco and I walked the sidewalk, Uh, And it took me a little while to get used to seeing as many homeless individuals on the street and just to see regular San Franciscans step over them was a little bit hardening for me at first because I'm a Southern girl. I'm an East Coast Southern girl. You know, we want everybody to have a home. We want everybody to feel safe. We want everybody to feel comfortable. And I'm like, you just walked over that man and didn't even say hello or anything. And now I'm like, okay, I get it. Mm-hmm. So how it's, it's, it impacted me in the fact that I need to do more. What else can I do? I I know I may not be able to help everybody, but if I can at least help those that come in contact with me or that I come in contact with, then I feel like when I lay my head down, I've done well and I'll hear well done. But it's it's continuously remind me to say, you know what? Thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. Thank you for being able to have the the capacity to where I can go to my family or I can go to my friends and and get the support I need. Um, It's it's opened my eyes to, okay, what else can I do? Mm. How else can I serve? Uh, What servant leader can I be? What can I do to help change the narrative? What can I do to bring awareness to, okay, yes, your dollars are important, Mm. but you're also needing to provide time. You're also needing to provide whatever your skill sets are, because if you're an architect, Hey, I may have a child that comes through the show today that I can draw really well, but I just never thought what I can do with that. Right. Or, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm just a lowly city um, sweeper, street sweeper, 
But you can come and say, you know what? I didn't have the, 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 the desire to go to college or, but I can help because now I'm helping keeping the city beautified. You know, it's something, it, there's nothing too small. Mm. So it, it's giving me that, okay, how can I help? What can I do? Where can I go? Who can I give something to that is a blessing? Or then they come to me and it's like, you know what? You think you're doing all that you can, but you're really not. Mm. You know, you have all these talents, but you're not sharing those gifts with others. You know, why are you sitting on this gift? Um, and I'm like, okay, yes, I know. I can do this. You know, so sometimes it pull that little coat string. Mm. Um, but, but there are days when I come in and I, I hear and I was like, you know, I heard somebody have this furniture over here when I was in this meeting on this Zoom call. Hey, Latarsha, who's our family service manager, did you know that we have this? And they can, who do you know that need this? And so now it's like, okay, well, we're going to get it in, you know, that kind of thing. And it's just, it, they call me, they say, you know, you're always into something. I was like, because <laughs> if I hear it, I'm going to share it because somebody may need it. So, and then I don't mind speaking, speaking up about it because my voice, if, if I can't use my voice to help someone else, then why, why do I have it? A hundred percent. And, and, you know, it makes me think of the, the idea that like, so I, I'm, you know, we're, we're black. That's our skin. That's the house we live in daily. Right. And I think we live our black history, our black legacy 365 days a year, but it does make me think about the people who are forgetful that they actually aren't doing all they can. And, and, and I mean, just work, it's not enough to work hard, but you have to work smart. And right. so what would you say to other people like myself who live outside of Hamilton Families Organization, you know, as far as the knowledge go, what would you say to them if you were on the subway and someone's like, what, what do you do? And they're like, oh, I had no idea. Like, what would you tell them about getting involved and how they can serve? Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> um, Post COVID, I, I always was share with individuals when they ask, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm glad you asked that question. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, you know, share that elevator spill. But um, it's more so not what I say. Mm -hmm. It's the passion that I put behind what I'm saying. And I'm being truthful and honest with what I'm saying. And now they're like, you know, I want to get involved. Great. Let me tell you what you can do. You can go to our website and click on our volunteer link. We, whatever it is your expertise is, we need it. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever it is, if it's, if you can't, if you can't cook great, because I don't want you in my kitchen, because I don't know if you're certified, mm -hmm. but if, if you can swing a hammer or you can do some painting and you can do a, a paintbrush or you can come and read to a child or, you know, whatever it is, we want that. Mm. Um, a lot of you say, well, I want to give you something. No, 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 no. We don't, we don't need your, we don't need clothes. We don't need, you know, we don't need your, your toiletries. We got those things. What we don't have is this right here. Mm -hmm. And then giving them that ability because sometimes people feel like they can't volunteer because they don't have the monetary needs or means to do so. It's bigger than the money. Mm -hmm. It's bigger than the money. I tell people all the time, if you do the right thing, you will, the money will come. Mm -hmm. If you do the right thing, the money will come. If you do the wrong thing, you're going to spend the money and you won't have more to come to back up. So it's, it's all about doing the right thing. Right. So I, you know, how people can get involved, wonderful ideas as far as, yes, don't get me wrong. I need to, because I don't want Corey or Christina to see this and say, no, she didn't say donations. We don't need, yes, we do need donations. Mm -hmm. We also need, we need, once COVID is to the new normal, we need people to, to come in and just give, give of themselves. Whatever your talents are, whatever your gifts are, we'll find a place for it. Yeah. And if it's not here at the shelter, we also have our transitional housing. So, you know, that is an opportunity as well. If that's not your thing and you're, you know, you may be in a real estate, hey, we're always looking for um, connections with different landlords or different leasing agents or different builders and, and that capacity as far as solidifying relationships so we can find housing. Um, if that's not your thing, if you're in the medical field, we're always looking at opportunities, how we can send families so that they can get the services that they're needing or even just talk to someone. Because if you're like me, you have a fear of dentists and you, you know, you go to the dentist and it's like you're all tensed up. Maybe just come in one day and just, you know, talk to the kids about the dentist office and, and now they don't have that fear anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's important. Yeah. You know, right now we have the social injustice going on. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I need my, my 
officers that are of, of color coming in, even some, even non-colored, the whites, the Mexicans, it doesn't matter, just coming in uniform so that they can start, so we can start building that bridge again. Yeah. Because it's it's been burned. But the kids need to learn, kids start with the kids because they're easier to get to because, you know, people of my age, you know, you can't teach an old dog new tricks <laughs> in one day. It's going to take a couple of days. Right. It's going to take some time. But you start with the kids and they can become more comfortable and more accustomed to seeing you and, and trusting you and building that relationship again. That's important. Mm. You know, you know, come and talking to our families and in reference to, you know, different job avenues, you know, different opportunities for educational and advancement, you know, whatever it is, yeah. we need it. I love because th there, there is, there's a disconnect and we have to bridge that gap. And that's what Hamilton Families is all about. We're, we're standing in that gap. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you, you just spoke about something that came up in one of my previous conversations as well, that I, I'm glad I keep getting reminded of, because it is that thing of, so I used to believe because I've never been anybody's version of rich, I guess, or at least in my mind. And so I <laughs> point to start looking people in the eye to tell them because they're human and they and I heard them talk to me. Sorry, I can't help you today. Right. And I was like, that's that's what I can do. Like, I ain't got the money to give them. But the least I can do is give them allow them the humanity they already possess and deserve to be respected through uh, and just say sorry i can't help you today or have a good day when they you know people say you know uh, i hope you're having a good day and i wanted to ask you like last question um what do you think sets hamilton families in the work you all do apart from other organizations that may, may have similar goals the people mm. Um, I, and I say that because there are a lot of different organizations that do the same thing we do, you know, granted. Um, and, and I think, and there's some very good programs out there. I think that one of the things that I found since I've been here at Hamilton is that we have some very good people. Mm -hmm. We have some people with huge hearts that want to do any and everything to help our participants succeed and become successful. That makes a difference. Yeah. Um, and they do it because it's authentic. It's real. It's not a, it's not, I'm just coming to get a paycheck. Now don't get me wrong, Christopher. We do have some that just want to come and get a paycheck. Get That's everywhere you go. You're going to have that everywhere you go. Absolutely. But we do the majority of the individuals that work with me and, and here at Hamilton truly want to, to see our family succeed and what can we do to help them do that? So I think the difference is people. Yeah, I, I, I feel that because I mean, I think it's close to impossible to have any entity be all of one thing. <laughs> but I find right. that the difference in most of the places I exist is that the people like you or like the people I've gotten to talk to over the past day and a half are the exception. Whereas I like to believe based mm -hmm. on what I've learned that at Hamilton Families, the individuals who are like, this is my job, they're the exception. They're, they're the odd ones out in that environment. You know, exactly, they, yeah. exactly. And I, and I think that exactly. absolutely makes you all different because everyone I've spoke to, and I think I've spoke to like six or seven people over the past two days from the organization, the norm is that y'all care a lot. And some people are like, oh, they care. Too. And some people might say they care too much over there. I go, I don't think there is a caring too much about society <laughs> and living well. Like, I don't right. think there's a caring too much. Um, and I, and I just love that. I, I want to thank you for spending your time with me because I, I, I know your time is valuable, especially during this pandemic. So thank you for, you know, answering my questions. And thank you for answering honestly, because again, that's, Black people, Black women have been censored historically. And this is now no longer the time to let that be normalized or acceptable because right. we can't move forward if we keep silencing the voices of the people most affected. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I tell people all the time. I say, you know, it's, it's been so long we've put stuff under the rug. That rug is too high. You can't, now you got to crawl up, mm -mm, get the stuff up under the rug, deal yep. with that first, and yep. then you can move forward smoothly. It, it's, it is what it is. It, you know, ace, ace, a spade, a spade. You know, let's call it like we'll see it and let's get the job done. Roll up them sleeves and let's get in there so i thank you for i thank the team for even thinking about me or, or even offering for me to share my little tidbits of nuggets of wisdom here that i found and have here while i'm working here at hamilton families and i wish you all the best and yes 
I was a fan. I am a fan of Hamilton. I haven't had a chance to see the um, see the musical. I've seen it on television, but I wanted to see it live in person. Um, but it will happen. Oh yeah, we're coming back. Wait, as soon as this it will happen. says good night, we will be back, and I will be itching to be on that stage. So don't you worry. And yeah, I, we had the meeting uh, a day or two ago, and this list of names all the people i've talked to were like first round mm -hmm. names i was just glad you were all available they I, I was like maybe i'll get two or three people if i ask them to interview someone and all oh, carrie or christina corey they were like no we have this person and this person and this person how many do you want <laughs> i have all of them so i'm just glad you all had the time i'm so really fortunate because I knew how much I didn't know about the work you do and the realities of the participants. And it, that's the information I wanted to get out there. Let's normalize that information because it seems like such a mountain when I go, I want to go volunteer. I, I have to have money. That was a thought I had. And thank you for clearing that up, for demystifying that so that I can you know, when the pandemic's over and we can be in, in spaces together, I can be like, no, no, I have, I have some time. I have, maybe all I can do is listen. Maybe there's some kids who want some adult that will actually listen to them. I go sit and watch the kid and let them talk out my face. Like, you know, stuff like that. So thank you for demystifying that idea. We, we have a music program. They're doing online, they're doing online um, and uh, keyboard and guitar lessons. What? So huh, that <laughs> voice, I can't, you see, I try to slide it in there. I don't have one, but you can come on up in there, sing a little something, you know, joy, joy, songs is joy. It gives you, gives makes you feel good. So there you go right there. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you again.